Greetings from us once again. Pleasure to present yet another video on a topic that will or has never missed since testing of 844 began. This is organic chemistry. 2021, the understanding of organic chemistry was tested in number six in paper two. So the figure four shows a flowchart involving reactions of some organic compounds. As usual, we are supposed to follow the scheme so that we are able to answer our questions very, very well. So it starts here. This is an alkanol because of the OH group here, and it has three carbons. So the name is propan-1-ol. Let's move down. In step three, we are obtaining an alkanoic acid out of an alkanol. So step three involves what we call oxidation. So as we follow the table, as we write the names of these processes, we need to start thinking of the reagents used for each process, and if possible, the condition. So for step three, this is oxidation. Don't forget, we do use our common oxidizing agents, that is acidified potassium manganate seven, or acidified potassium chromate 6. And then we heat, okay? So heat is our condition, and the two substances I've mentioned are our reagents for step three. I want to state here that the word acidified must be included if you are using chromate 6, if you are using potassium chromate 6. For potassium manganate 7, you may afford to ignore the word acidified, you still get the answer. The argument is potassium manganate 7 is usually a stronger oxidizing agent. It can still oxidize even without being acidified. But for potassium chromate 6, please, we have to have the word acidified before it can qualify to be a reagent for step 3. Now, how do we call our product? This is propanoic acid. Propanoic acid because of the three carbons. Step four, we are reacting it with an alkali, sodium hydroxide. So this is actually neutralization. Step four is a neutralization process or reaction between an alkanoic acid and an alkali. So here we shall obtain a salt that is called sodium propanoate. Of course with some water, but we need the major uh, product. Now somebody can argue that Y can also be water. Yes, because we obtain the salt plus water, but here I believe we are being asked about the major product. Now moving up, Step two, we are reacting an alkanol with magnesium. We normally obtain compounds that are generally called alk oxides. And because for our reaction, the number of carbons are three, our product here will be called magnesium propoxide. Simply because the number of carbons are defined. They are three. Otherwise, generally, a reaction between a metal and an alkanol gives what we normally call metal alk oxide. So the alk there is named depending on the number of carbons. If there are two, it is ethoxide. If the carbon is one, methoxide. Carbon is three, propoxide, four, butoxide, and so on. Good. Moving now to our right-hand side, 
Step one, we are getting an alkene. This is an alkene. If you expand it, you would see that there is a double bond between carbon one and two, starting from the right hand side. So this is how it looks like. And this is prop one in. So we are getting an alkene from an alkano. The process is dehydration. Again, take note, what do we use to dehydrate? Concentrated sulfuric acid, mainly, but we do have some others, like aluminum oxide, phosphoric acid. Aluminum oxide can also, I mean silicon oxide, which can also be called uh, silica. And then aluminum oxide can also be called alumina and so on. All those can be used to dehydrate. And of course, the uh, condition is heat. In step five, we are doing polymerization on our prop one in. And now this polymer is called polypropene. Polypropene. What do you need for step five? You need propene as the reagent, and you will need high temperature and also high pressure, or even a catalyst. All these we have learned in our earlier videos. Lastly, to step six, we are introducing bromine to our ethene. So when you open up, the double bond here will break, and you have one bromine attached here, another one attached there. So the name is 1,2-dibromopentane. Not pentane, but uh, propane, because of the three carbons. So that becomes your Z. We have studied our scheme very well. We now want to get down to answering our questions. So... Part A, write the formula and give the names of compounds X. Moving up, let's see what X was. X is magnesium propoxide. Now, to write the formula, this H here is the one that will be replaced by magnesium. But please don't forget, this part that remains this side normally has valency 1 while magnesium has valency 2. So, I'll explain more on that in the formula. For now, the name is magnesium, what? Propoxide. Now, for the formula, we shall write what is there in the question up to the O. Okay? You copy what is here up to the O because we are replacing this H with the metal. But it is having a valency of 1 while magnesium has a valency of 2. So this one has to be enclosed in bracket. Put a 2 for valency of magnesium and then you end with the symbol for the metal, Mg. If it were sodium, for example, with valency 1, you don't have to put the bracket. So this is how we write magnesium pro. Why? Why is here we called it sodium propanoate? So we start with the name first, sodium propanoate. For the formula, it becomes very easy. You write this the way it is, and then sodium replaces the last hydrogen here. This is the replaceable hydrogen in our alkanoic acid. So the formula becomes very cheap. CH3, CH2, then C double O, N A. We have replaced our last hydrogen in the propanoic acid. Moving on to the next questions. Uh, we are asked to give the reagents and conditions necessary for carrying out step three. Where is step three? Step three is here. We are oxidizing 
our alkanol to alkanoic acid. So what do you need for oxidation? I've talked about them. We have acidified, allow me to use symbols, potassium manganate 7. Or you can also use acidified potassium chromate 6. Now, if you don't put this word acidified for potassium manganate 7, we still give you the mark. But if you don't put it for this other one, we will not give you the mark because chromate 6 is a weaker oxidizing agent. It can only oxidize with acidification or after being acidified. Now, these are the reagents. What about the conditions? You can warm, okay? You can heat, or you can also subject the reactants to high temperature. So, each of these is half mark for one mark uh, to that question. Step five, conditions and reagents. Where is step five? Step five, we are carrying out polymerization on propene to get polypropene. So obviously, the reagent has to be propene. What about the condition? Conditions are many here. We can talk about high temperature. We can talk about high pressure. We can also talk about catalyst. And here, please, you don't have to specify. Just leave them the way they are. Next question. Step one. What is step one? Step one, we are doing dehydration. We are removing elements of water from our alkanol to get an alkene. So, uh, we are told that it can be carried out using concentrated sulfuric six acid and some heating. So, what we normally know, the common dehydrating agent has been mentioned. The examiner wanted you to name another. Okay? <laughs> so here, as we agreed earlier, you can use aluminum oxide, which can also be called alumina, okay? Then you can also use silicon 4 oxide, which can also be called silica, and which can even be called sand, because silicon 4 oxide is the main component of sand. But then again, we also have an option of using phosphoric, uh, phosphoric 5 acid. Then, any of those for reagent, the condition becomes high temperature or just heat. Don't commit by putting any range of temperature. You may spoil. So just leave the conditions the way they are there. Now, give the name of the type of reaction that takes place in step one. So step one here, we have mentioned it is dehydration. What about step five? Step five, we have called it polymerization. So you answer your questions very well because you have studied your scheme very well. So we have dehydration there. Here we have polymerization, which can also be called addition. To be specific, you can tell us addition, polymerization, polymerization, addition, polymerization. And we can also call it a self-addition reaction, self-addition reaction. All these can stand in for step five. Write an equation for the reaction in step six. Step six, we are reacting our... Uh, propene with bromine to form 1,2-dibromopropane. So, the equation in condensed form becomes CH3 CH CH2 plus bromine. Then you get CH3 CH Br then uh, CH2 Br. If you can't follow it in this condensed form, 
we allow you to open it up like we had done earlier. Sorry, this one has two hydrogens. So this is your original molecule. You are adding bromine to it. So when you do so, we shall uh, break the double bond and then we create rooms or we create space where our uh, this one should not have more than one this one should not have H here so here is where bromine will attach itself and then another bromine so there we are if you cannot follow the condensed we advise you open it up and please don't overshoot the number of uh, bonds that carbon can form they have to be four for each carbon okay so that would do lastly we were asked to state the observations made in step six step six is the same one where we are reacting our alkene with bromine and you know that the bromine is decolorized so bromine is decolorized you could as well talk about the colors so bromine changes from yellow to colorless it can be yellow or brown depending on the concentration to colorless that would do for that part now uh, if a student used bromine water and you write bromine water is decolorized again we shall give you the mark remember in the scheme bromine was br2 aqueous which means there would be some elements of bromine water as well thank you for your time parting shot this is a topic that never has never missed in any past kcse paper so chances of it coming again during your time is very high let us keep the facts at fingertips as we prepare for our final exams. Thank you.